Okay, single whip. The arm in single whip. This part. The straight arm. If any of you have learnt off Dad's DVDs correctly, and you've started with the beginner's DVDs, or my DVDs, or you've learnt from any one of our instructors, if they were teaching you correctly, they will have told you that when you do single whip, it's the only posture in the form which has a straight arm. Every other posture, even if it seems to be extending, the arm is never actually straight, or never locked, never, never totally straight like that. There's always just a light curve to the arm. Single whip, however, that's my single whip arm. Now, I'm not doing this. See, now I'm hyperflexing my arm, I'm pushing it back. It's actually more effectively now it's not straight because it's bending back the other way, so that's not a straight arm. So there's slightly curved on the natural side. There's straight. There's tension, and that's hyper hyperextended the opposite way. So I don't want it there, I want it there. So it's got to be a straight arm. Ever since uh, Dad started to allow people to see himself doing his form at his own level, and of course teaching his senior students um, the more advanced ways of doing the form and allowing them to see himself do it, the arm becomes bent through many, many years and hundreds of hours of training. However, nowadays, people who have only been training a year or even six months, they always go to the top. Everyone always goes to the top because people think, oh, okay, if, if, I, if I show someone, I don't know, something in push hands, push hands is a good example. If I tell a beginner, you've got to hold your arm out here when you're doing single push hands. So you're doing your single push hands like that, da 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 da, -da because it's strong. It's got a nice solid pung like that. If you bring your arm in here like this and try to do your push hands really close, it'll just, it'll just break down every time. You won't be able to hold off the force. So a beginner can see that. They can see, okay, this is easy. I, I can do that. That's stronger because I haven't learned how to do it the other way yet. I'm not strong enough yet. If they do it like this, they can see it doesn't work. However, with the single whip arm, what's to, what's to do? It's, it's not harder to do it the advanced way. So people go, okay, that's a straight arm, that's the beginner's way. Then they say, okay, well, I can do that. I, I can stand there with my arm bent, so I'll do it that way, because that's the better way, that's the more advanced way. It's the more advanced way. That does not mean that a beginning student should do it just because they can do it. The reason for this is that when we progress in our Tai Chi training, the things that you as a beginner see are the physical elements and only the large physical elements. You're not seeing what's happening internally and you're not seeing the physical minute elements of uh, any particular posture. So what you might think is, for example, if I do single whip as a basic level, as, as a beginner should be doing it, if I do this, okay, so that's how a beginner should be doing it. So my arm there is straight just slightly to the rear of the north, in case you didn't know that, so it's just there. It's not held right out to that corner where you straightened it. It will come slightly around with your body, but don't bring it right over here. Just, just have a light opening to the shoulder. Okay, so what a beginner sees, single whip posture. Okay, that's my single whip posture correctly as a beginner. Straight arm, correct posture, everything aligned correctly for a beginner's stance. If I do this, which is what a beginner sees, I'll bend the elbow. You see? That's all I've changed. I've changed the elbow. This makes the whole posture incredibly weak. It's very difficult to understand these kind of things. All I can tell you is, when, 
with Tai Chi, Tai Chi is an internal training exercise. You can't be, accept, uh, you can't be expected to understand certain things until you've been practicing it for a long time. This is where you have to simply take the advice from someone who has been practicing it a long time, who is in touch with their own energy, and they feel what is meant to be happening, as opposed to me just telling you, oh, Dad told me to make you have your arms straight, and me just alliterating, realliterating that. I'm telling you because of what my body feels. And if I hold this posture like this, and bend my elbow, the whole posture is out of whack because the elbow now is disconnected from the whole body. To have it like this now, everything's in that nice physically strong position. It's in a physically large, powerful position. If I take one element and make it weak, nothing else is going to be working because everything's disconnected now. Now watch, see if you can see the difference when I do the posture. So. There's the basic position, like that. That's how a beginner should be holding the posture. This is what a beginner thinks they should be doing with a slightly bent arm, like that. But watch what happens to my everything else when I bend my arm. Now, either you could see that or you couldn't. If you couldn't see it, then you should definitely be keeping your arms straight. Even if you could see it, you can't possibly mimic that on a visual scale. So, as you notice then, when I went into that, I can't actually go from this position, and I can't just go straight into the correct position, because Tai Chi is movement. That's what it is. The Tai Chi form is a movement. It's not about a bunch of postures. It's about the flow of the movement. This part, from here to here, is the importance of each move, not exactly how you hold the end of the posture in, in any posture that you happen to be doing. Okay, so, there's my basic posture, so to get into that, you might have noticed I didn't just, well, I can't, I don't even know how to do that, I can't physically do it. I have to move from here to get the posture feeling correct, Now it feels right. When I used to view Dad doing the form, which I saw him do the form many, many times, always just, if he was out the back doing his training, I'd just sit around the corner and, and watch him training. Because the best time to watch someone training, of course, is when they don't know you're watching because then they're really just doing their own form. They're not performing for someone else. But when I see him do the form, whether it be like that where no one was watching or you know, even in a class situation where everyone was watching, you can see, it's, it's, it's not something I physically see, I don't see like a, a thing glowing off him or something, but it's just a, it's a sense of feeling when you, when you watch and it's power. When I say power, that doesn't just mean power as in like brute force, it's just energy power coming off the body. When I see a beginner doing the form, like this, with the correct structure, it's at least physically strong and structured. It doesn't have anything internal in it yet, but it's physically there. The physical teaches us about the internal. By doing everything physically correct and structured and nice, that will then teach our energy to become structured and sound and powerful. So if I take this nice, strong, structured stance and do something like that. So I haven't done anything internally. I've just made the physical structure weak. That now is going to teach my energy to be weak. However, once my energy starts to take over, here's your physical, here's your internal. This is where we start. As you progress through your training, this happens. The internal takes over from the physical. So once your internal becomes in touch with your body and you know how to uh, move your energy and you know what's happening inside your own body, what happens is you can do any posture you want. It doesn't matter where your arms are, it's the energy that's strong. Again, push hands as an example. 
when we learn push hands, we learn it like this, we learn the correct postures as we're going through. But you'll sometimes see me doing push hands like this. Very, very quads closed, wrists broken, breaking every rule in the book, but it's still working because I don't need the physical structure on the outside anymore because what's happening inside is doing the right thing. So that's making any posture that I happen to be doing a physically sound one. But as a beginner, you must learn these correct structured principles because it's the form that teaches you how to develop your energy. I don't teach you how to develop your energy. I teach you a series of movements and those movements teach you how to develop energy. If I teach you how I do it myself, that's like, you know, you're jumping at the deep end. If you're jumping at the deep end, you drown. You've got to work your way up gradually through your form. Another reason for straightening the arm, uh, single whip, uh, because of course, as I said, that's the only posture with the straight arm. You could, it's not to say that you have to have a straight arm to have powerful structure. All the other postures are nice and solid and strong but have bent elbows. Another reason for the straight arm is it's teaching you as a beginning student to redirect energy uh, through your own body. When I say redirecting energy, um, I'm talking not so much about taking energy in and redirecting through the ground, like what we do in uh, push hands, for example. I'm talking about channeling energy to, uh, to give out energy. Locked joints such as that, or locking my knee out, locking joints blocks energy flow. So it'll get a bit stagnant in there. No, you, can't, you can't stop your energy flow, that's, that's, you know, it's not possible to do that. But you can slow it down a bit. So basically, your energy will take the easiest path to go through. So if I lock this joint out, the energy that's coming through my body, say, say for instance I'm doing something and I, <sighs> if I do that, now that was uh, just an open explosive movement. My energy just went out from everywhere. It wasn't coming out a hand or a foot or a knee or wherever, a specific point. It's just, <sighs> that's just blah, the, the energy scattering out from my body. That's a nice thing to do in some cases if you just feel you need to get rid of some energy from your body. However, it's useless for healing or for fighting, which is the primary things we want to do in our Tai Chi training. So, what we want to do is we want to learn to take all that energy that we just scattered out from every little element of our body and concentrate it down to the palm that we're using or the foot that we're using or, or whatever. So, this is basically just like a training method when you first start out. You lock the arm out, your energy is saying, oh, we can't go that way, there's a big block there, let's go this way. So when we do the form, you're here, your energy might be just, you know, flowing around, it doesn't know where to go, because you're, you're, you haven't tapped into how your energy works yet. You haven't got your energy working with your intention. So even though you might be consciously thinking, strike that way, it's not your intention going that way. So like for instance, I can think consciously, strike to the camera like this, but that's not my intention going, that's not my energy, everything going to the camera. Now, if I just go like this, this is not me going to the camera, whereas now, every element of my body there, right from the ground, all through the body, is channeling every single element and through here and straight out that left palm. So doing this is just a basic little training aid for yourself to learn. By doing that, you're physically cutting off any energy from being able to, or the, the majority of the energy from being able to get out that direction. So your energy will go, oh, okay, I'll go this way. And that's helping you to understand, well, this is the hand that's releasing as we're doing the form. As you progress through your form, of course, you begin to understand how to channel energy. And that's where we don't need to lock the joint out anymore. And by not locking the joint out, you're then creating more softness and therefore getting a better energy flow. So even though the energy won't be going out this hand because we're channeling it through here, by that I'm now being soft as an advanced practitioner, the whole form will of course be uh, enhanced by that. 
if there's tension anywhere that you can feel a job locked joint or anything, it's of course going to slightly take away from the internal sides um, of your training. Um, that goes same with any posture through the, through your form. So um, you know, for example, pun. When we come in here, that's our beginner. We'll do pun. Nice again. Nice and strong and solid. If I take that posture and do this. That's hopeless. There's nothing, nothing at all happening there at all. I've just taken that physical position and made my arms smaller. So now I've got no structure. I've got no physical and I've got no internal. You can take away the physical once your internal takes over. And your internal cannot possibly take over. Tai Chi is a development. It doesn't matter um, if you, for instance, with, with, with a physical uh, training, I don't know, gymnastics or something, the more hours you put in, the more you train that movement over and over and over again, re religiously, you'll, you'll increase much, much quicker. So for example, you could take, um, uh, let's say for example, if you took someone who did gymnastics for one year, but trained every single day, they're gonna be much better gymnast than someone who trains for five years, but just trains once a week, for example because that's just a physical development. Whereas with Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi, all of that kind of stuff, Qigong work, it's an internal development. An internal can only work at a certain pace. Of course, the more training you do will make that go faster, but it can never just jump straight up. It can't move as fast as physical learning can move. So throughout your own training, if you took, again, that same thing, if you took the person who trained for five years doing their form, say they did their form once a day and they trained for five years, they may not have as much perfection and exact poise of balance and all that kind of stuff, but the internal sides of things are going to be working much better than the person who trained only for one year but trained their form four times a day. So they're going to be getting only one year of energy development, but with a lot more hours of physical work. Whereas the other person's got five years of energy development with a bit less physical work. Of course, the best thing to do is have the person trained for five years and doing the form four times a day. Then, of course, you get the energy development as well as the physical. You've got to have both working hand in hand. All I'm saying is, no matter, even if you train, you know, do your form ten times a day, you're still not going to get to an advanced internal form state from a short period of time. It must develop over years and you must become to understand your own body. The more training you do, the faster this process will go, but you can't be expected to get to a small frame level within a year, for example. Um, so same thing, as I say, just back to that pun position. Um, same thing as I was saying before with the single whip. That's a nice, strong, solid posture. When a beginner does that, yeah, it looks good. It looks strong. And that's going to teach them how to do the form correctly. If they take that and go, oh, well, Eli has his arms a bit closer together. This hand's a bit higher, whatever. That's now nothing's happening. But if I go into the posture. there it's not just the arms that changed everything changed the back changed the pelvis changed the legs changed everything changed so all the power from the rest of my body came into the structure of my arms whereas now I've taken a static position and I've changed just the arms this power from the rest of my body hasn't come into here so now the arms are weak if the arms are working on their own then they need a physical structure of their own if I come into here now, now they're not working on their own. They're working with the body. So now I can have them wherever I want, within reason, because they're connected to my body, working, moving with my internal energy, as well as on a physical level, just connected to my physical structure of the rest of my body correctly. That way, my form can become smaller, but still be extremely powerful. In fact, even more powerful, of course, than um, the physical uh, way of doing it. Once you get into the uh, 
the small frame level by connecting, once your body feels that connection, both on an internal and an external level, uh, the smaller movements, so, you know, doing pung like that rather than like that, the smaller frame movements adhere themselves better to the body mechanic, to the connection to, the, to everything else. So, you know, you could say, okay, well, why don't I do the big physical movements even when I'm at the advanced stages and I've got all those connections happening? Well, you can kind of still do that. However, if I do the form like this, and that's all nice and connected, but that's actually not as powerful as when I'm doing it in the smaller frame level, because that small frame movement works better on the internal connection side of things, whereas the large frame movement works better on the physical, um, beginner's way of doing it. So, I think I've rambled on for enough now for you to understand that principle. The basic lesson here is don't jump in at the deep end. Basically, as a beginner, you don't understand internal energy. You must take advice from someone who's been doing it for many, many years. I myself have been doing and practicing in Tai Chi for 23 years now. So that's a pretty good amount of time. But I'm not, even, I'm not only even giving you my own knowledge, I'm of course giving you the collective knowledge of myself and the, I don't know, 45 years or so of Dad's uh, internal martial art training. So that's a lot of collective knowledge and understanding of the internal arts. So if you're first starting out and you think, oh, well, I want to have my arm bent because you don't understand the principle of that, you might think, oh, well, that doesn't feel any different to me. Of course, it doesn't feel any different to you because you don't understand the principles yet. But after five or ten years of training, you'll look back and you'll go, ah, that's what he meant. And that's happened to myself several times throughout my training. It's even still happening today, even though I've been training for so long. Certain little things that Dad may have shown me in the past, whether it be him demonstrating something or him explaining something to me, principles, movements, and so on. Um, at the time, I would think, oh, well, I don't know, that, that doesn't seem to make sense, you know? I think this way, this way works much better. But I didn't just say to myself, oh, well, you know, that doesn't work, I'm going to keep doing it this way for whatever it, it might have been. I said to myself, well, okay, this isn't working for me, so I'll keep doing it the beginner's way. I won't try to do it the advanced way. Or if Dad was telling me about a beginner's principle, even if it felt maybe slightly wrong for myself, it felt slightly wrong for myself because I hadn't learned how to do it yet. So I would allow, and I just accepted the fact that, well, this guy's been doing this stuff for a long time. I think he has a pretty good grasp on it. And I simply looked at his movement and thought, well, that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to move like that. I want to be able to fight like that and heal like that. So he's giving me the correct advice on to how to get there. Surely he knows better than me to how for, how for me to take that journey. So I took his advice. And then many, many years later, I'd forget about those things that he may have told me, not even thinking about them. However, many years later, you'd just be in your training, whether it be push hands or punching or whatever it might be, and a light bulb would come on. Something will happen in your training, and it'll flash back to, to that five years ago where your teacher or myself or whoever told you something that you didn't understand, and all of a sudden, all the lights just switch on, and you'll understand that, that concept of, of what is going on and what's happening in your form. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is you just have to trust in your teacher with the internal arts. You can't always be given an exact logical explanation for what might be happening. Most of what we teach can be um, explained in a logical manner and wherever it can be, that's, that's what we try to do. Um, you know, we're, we're not the type of school by where we just say, oh, you must trust in the master and you do what you're told. Any questions that you have, you feel free to ask as many questions as you want and wherever I can explain on a physical manner, on a logical level, um, I'll try my best to do that. But sometimes, with reference to internal energy, it's about a feeling. 
It's not a physical thing. It's not something that can actually be explained. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed.